Well, hello, good evening, and welcome back to the Late Shifts episode. Is this eleven? No, it can't be. Yeah, this is. No, I think it's ten. Ten. It's at least eleven. It might be twelve because we did a. Do we do a draft episode? Wait, week one. No, it's got to be ten. No. Yeah, you're right. It is eleven. Eleven. Welcome to episode eleven. I can't. That's amazing. This is the most we've ever done anything. We're going to forget the number every single time. That's how great this is. This is the late shifts episode question mark hashtag a beta. Um, but I'm just excited to jump in because uh, although there was no real thing to trigger this, uh, Cam asked what we wanted to talk about, and I was like, whatever, who cares? Let's just talk about our regular sports teams. <laughs> so I'm officially broken in fantasy football. But um, the goal for tonight is to talk a little bit about fantasy, a little bit about real football, and a little bit about Dungeons and Dragons, as one does on a fantasy. Yes. Yeah. I promised Stem that I have an update for him. All right. Well, let's... And uh, by that, I mean I told you about it, and I haven't told him yet. Sure. You promised him through me about 30 seconds ago. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure he figured that one out. Well, um the recap of this last week really is just Justin Fields is really good. And I, I was all set and I told you this before that I was going to have like a bit and it was all about like, kind of like judging Justin Fields performances. Yeah. And that's pointless now yeah. because he's just amazing every time. <laughs> and did. it's like the things that I was saying at the beginning, the bears have finally realized that they have a dual threat quarterback. So maybe you should have dual threat things. Yep. Yep. Now, to be fair, he has played Miami and Detroit the last two games, which feel real good. But he also plays Atlanta next week. We'll see what happens when he goes to the Jets week 12. I'm still sure it'll happen. Also, the Jets are legit defense now. When did that happen? I barely. Thank you. Very good question. Is this for me? Is it a, is it a, Oh, a picture. What is it? Is it an eyeball? It's an eyeball eating jelly. An eyeball eating jelly. Ooh. Thank you, Charlie. I don't know if that's safe for uh TV. That was not. <laughs> that's, that's in there for posterity now. It's in the podcast. Great. Anyway, we'll see. But if he follows this trajectory, Cam, he's gone from eight points to four points to 10 points to 19 to 20 to 25 to 30 to 48 to 43 he's breaking 50 this week i mean there's no question about it oh no the jelly's on the eyeball (laughs) oh no it's stuck on the eyeball the only question is is when does he like how many games does he rush for more yards than he passes how close has he gotten well, he ran for 176 that one week. That one? I can't remember if he, I think he got like over 200 yards passing in that oh, game too. It must have been um, against Miami. I think so. Because he only had 123 yards passing. Yeah. And of course he had more than that rushing. Right. Well, my point is not that he's done it already, but how many more oh. will he have that? he runs for more than he can pass because by all means i still think he's a good passer yeah but he can still run better than anyone else on the team and i would trust his legs more than i trust the pass catchers arms khalil herbert went out hurt last game and so it's just him and david montgomery and so he'll just put david montgomery on his back and run anyway the point the point is that uh justin fields had 43 points and the next highest score all right, Charlie, Daddy's trying to talk to Mr. Sam. I love you. Thank you. Jelly eyeball. Jelly ball. This is what happens when she actually hear you. <laughs> it's over. Oh. Uh, she, okay. My next highest scorer was uh, Deonta Foreman on Thursday night with 19 points. Also insanity. Well, that's still really good for him. Yeah, and it was less than half of what Justin Fields put up. Agreed. So I'll I'll just I'll just show you the damage. Um, as you see, Justin Fields forty three points, um, Foreman nineteen, McCaffrey fine game. Um, you know, yeah, may, maybe you should have taken that 
<laughs> Justin Jefferson yeah, trade? Right? That, I mean, I guess <laughs> like I he didn't leave it up long enough. He left it up for like 20 minutes. I didn't even have time to think about oh, it. Oh, and then and then he got cold feet on it. Yeah, then he pulled it. Okay. Um, which is probably good. Um yeah. For him and for me. Well, like we were talking about, you can't make that deal because you need running backs right now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, so let's just finish this this nonsense. My my two heroes from the last couple of weeks didn't do much. Ayuk actually had a fine game. Six receptions, 84 yards. He did lose the fumble, but like yeah, but that's a good that's a good game. Yeah, and he seems to be uh Garoppolo's favorite. Like he likes him more than Devo right now. So if that goes on, that's fine with me. Yeah, seems like he's a solid two. Uh, I don't know what to do with Palmer, but whatever. Um, McCaffrey had a decent game. Um, they're splitting carries between him and uh, and what's his name, but I'm not worried about it. Like he still got 15 carries, most of the goal line work, a bajillion passes. Like if yeah, he's not the workhouse, what whatever. It's not uh, Wilson, is it? Wilson. No, Jeff Wilson is now a, a a Miami Dolphin. Oh yeah, that's where he went. I can't. I was thinking in my mind that that was Matt Breida. Oh, yeah. but then I was like, wait, that, was that he? Was no, awesome. I can't remember. Years uh, ago, great. Yeah, so it's no, it's the guy who just who was hurt and came off IR. Um, Mustard? No, he's, no. he's on the Dolphins too. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. They both go to the Dolphins. It's Mostert and uh, and Jeff Wilson. Are there two running backs right now? Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Because they take the Shanahan offense, and so they're like, you already know it. Come on over. Oh, that's a they good place. It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's – um, what's his name? Who hurt his knee? Elijah Mitchell. Oh, uh, that's right. Yep. So, like, he's a decent running back. He'll get hurt again. It's fine. Yeah. It's whatever. Uh, so i'm not worried about it if he poops the bed next week we can talk but he got basically his projection <laughs> yeah yep um we already talked about foreman dolch pooped the bed he had maybe like 12 targets in a row all of which were called back on penalties ended the game with four targets one catch russell wilson's a disaster you you can't you have to ditch D- Denver like anyone yeah. on Denver right now. I you, mean, like I think Jerry Judy would be fine, but he's like coming off the ankle injury. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Williams, uh, Swift had four carries. I don't know what's going on, but you know, sixteen carries, touchdown, got most of the goal line work. Yeah, well, he, he saved himself with that you know, last minute touchdown. Yep. Um, both him and the, and the team, obviously. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know what's going on. Cause I was, you knew I was sold on Swift. I think mm-hmm. he's amazing. I don't know what's going on there. Is he, maybe he's hurt. Yeah. And they're just not saying anything about it. I don't know. It has to be, but I don't know. Um, I mean, he doesn't like it. It came out that he was pissed at the usage and the coaches just are keeping him under glass. I don't know why, but I, I don't know what to do. Like Giants, yeah. Buffalo, these two games with Williams, that's going to be tricky because he's kind of ground and pound. And if they go behind, mm-hmm. he's not going to get the ball. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah. Yep. Tyler Bass, I don't know why um, why they don't want to kick field goals. If they'd kicked any of the field goals in the red zone on fourth down instead of interceptions. Like they could have won the game a bunch of times. We'll talk about that game when we recap our teams. I just want to yeah. say he had a great game for a kicker and could have had even more if they would just use it. Yeah, and and that was the funny thing because you like you texted me like, why does Buffalo hate field goals? It's like it's not that they hate them. I mean, they they took some of them, but they just like throwing interceptions more. I'll say it, that. It just felt weird to me. It's like, it's fourth and five. Let's not kick the field goal to tie the game. Let's, what? Magenta? Hmm. I don't think I put her away. I think I was just playing with her and she was still out. Where do we have her? Upstairs. Okay, when daddy's done, he'll go look for her, okay? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily fault them for trying to go for it on, on fourth. And 
I'm assuming you're talking about the overtime. Well, that one and the the one where they they went forward and he threw the interception in the fourth quarter. Oh, well, and again, we'll get into that. That one, there's people that slagged him off for that. If you think about it, though, that still would have made it a two possession game. Yep. Um, it you know it, it wouldn't have changed things, but if they get a touchdown there, that makes it a three possession game, legit. Right. And right. at that point, it, it's over. I mean, wouldn't have changed things. They went into overtime, so it might have changed. <laughs> well, well, yeah. But I know what you mean, and I yeah. get. It. We'll we'll get we can we can talk about that later. Yeah. We'll finish this up first. Last thing is Dallas's defense is dealing with some injuries. I don't know. No. That's why they couldn't do anything against Green Bay, but it's a little scary coming off the bye that they give up 31 points to Green Bay. Um, I'm hoping that that is a sign of things to come because I'd love for them to give up more points. Sure, I would too. I think if we get to 31 points versus them, I think we win as well. Yeah, I'd feel good about that from a sports team perspective. I don't know about their defense against Minnesota next week. And I really need all these wins. I also am going to need to pick up a second defense probably for this Philly game. Um, Mm -hmm. Because one thing Dallas can't do, it's stop the run. And if there's one thing Philly found out that they have to do, it's run the ball since Jalen hurts threw for like a hundred yards and what the heck Washington beat Philadelphia. What world do we live in? Oh, the only good thing about that. Well, I mean, (laughs) let's be honest. It was great that Philadelphia lost. But it made the that close win that the Vikings had against Washington feel a lot better. Oh, what is it? Um, we found it. Oh, good job. Is it a zebra? I can't tell. So I'll need another week 16 game, assuming we get that far. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, that's, that. you know, that's, we're five weeks away from having to worry about that yeah and and uh oh there okay a few more things um that's fine uh just another reminder that i don't know how to start players because left jeff wilson best player on my team besides justin fields on the bench i did kind of want to start him but i was going to start him over deontay foreman not really uh williams although i had a feeling you know anyway i that makes me happy um People's Jones looking good. Um, no I mean, does, still, and, but and it's should yards. only get better for him as he gets competent quarterback play. Yeah, Mooney showing his floor like didn't really do anything, but yep. guaranteed to get like seven points. Um, yep. And and uh, Kyle Pitts monster uh, two receptions on eight targets. Hey, it was better than Greg Dulcich, so. <laughs> So you got to start Pitts. Um, Next week. This was encouraging. Pickens, a rushing yeah. touchdown. Yeah. Two rushing attempts. Only three receptions, but he's only going to get more and more involved. They clearly want to give him the ball. Yep. So and when, a- when they're engineering plays for him like that, you know that they've got more planned for him. Yep. All right, real quick, before we look at waivers, here's an update on – the stat the standings eighth place still hey. um, you know i'm within a game and exact same points as the 10th place team if ninth place does anything i'm in trouble right like we're still in that same one game between the top you know six teams here or these six teams so we need to win um there was another trade yep uh aj brown and Mike or and Tanyan for Evans. Oh, and, so another another trade. Yeah. Oh. So um fairly even. Super, yeah. dumb, super dumb for Najee in Paris because Mike Evans hasn't had his bye yet. He's on a bye week this week. Najee needs to win. Oh. So this is just in my in my opinion, this is collusion. I'm not gonna raise a stink about it. But brother, well, it's not. It's not me. like they're brothers, right? Yeah, yeah. Like putting him clearly out of contention. Yeah. Like not okay, but um, no. whatever. Uh, so that that kind of stinks for uh for our chances here. 
but it means we got to kind of win out here. Um, the good news is that the go getters, um, have Justin Jefferson. So, um, anyway, uh, so that's where we're at there. Um, we play, we play, uh, we play bubble gum this week. We'll see okay. if he updates his team. Uh, yeah, you said he, he has to update his team. but He does not, but um, probably will. Um, I, like, I didn't talk to him at all this week, so I don't know if he's got other things going on. I'm going to text um, him really deep philosophical questions. <laughs> but, I mean, even if he throws his guys in there, Cooks, Pat Fryermuth is pretty good. Cooks and Samuel is not the end of the world. He'll have to pick up a tight end. And he'll have to get a defense, too. Has to get a defense. So we'll see. Um, see what happens there. Um, all right. Last but not least is the waiver wire. Now, Christian Watson, you said we needed to talk about a lot of things. Do you think he's worth an ad? With the way with the way you've got things right now, I think he's worth a flyer. Um, I would just say you got to drop uh, Dulcich. Yeah, I mean Dulcich is gone. Here's yeah. the thing. Let's look at my team quick. Here's the thing: is at this point, am I picking up starters? If they're not going to start for my team, I don't really care. Yeah. And so the two things I worry about is week 14, which is my bye week apocalypse. Yeah. And the playoffs. And so if I'm not going to start these guys leading up to that, and I don't know if Christian Watson's going to do that, then really what I should be looking at is this week. Uh, yeah. So week 14, I have no pits. I have no Mooney. And I have oh, no I forgot about that. Yeah. So you would need a tight end for that. But I mean. So I'm going to need a tight end. You know, Dulcich against Kansas City sounds okay. But we just saw what his floor is, right? Yeah. Well, we saw what Denver's floor is. And it's not good. No. Um, so just keeping that in mind that I'll have to start. Um, oh, you'll have to pick up a quarterback too. Yeah, I'll need a quarterback. Um that's really it. I'll need a quarterback and a tight, a tight end. end. Okay, well, that's, that's and, not as bad. But here's the deal. Words on um, in my IR. Yeah. He's going to be coming back, and I'll have to have a roster spot for him. So that means if I drop Dulcich, I'm still full. Well, and at that point, we can kind of gauge how Mooney's doing, because if he keeps putting in – you know, five to seven points. Yep. That's that's something you could drop. Yeah. So the question is, oh, I like your socks. The the question, uh-huh. Cool. <laughs> the question is, um, what is the best bang for my buck? Do I prepare for week 14 now and use the extra roster spots? Because the way the way I see it is. I don't know who's going to pick up what or what's going to happen. Yeah. I should probably nail down either my tight end or my quarterback now while I know what there is. Well, what you need to look at who they're going up against that week. All right. So let's do week 14 projections. I mean, this is what hurts, right? Obvious choice would be him. I'm not doing it. Yep. The <laughs> obvious choice is back to the well. <laughs> Because really, there's nothing else. I'm not playing Zach Wilson at Buffalo. I'm not playing PJ Walker. Period. I'm not. You're certainly not playing Daniel Jones against Philly. I'm not playing Mills. I'm not playing Kenny Pickett. And so it's Goff or it's Tannehill. This is why Deshaun Watson has come to like attack me. I would have played Jacoby. Yeah. Yeah, against Cincinnati, who's. Cincinnati's got 
a lot of problems on cornerback right now. I know it's going to be, it's going to be a, a, I don't want to talk about it. No. And, and you've made your call that you are not going to pick him up. And I fully support you in this. Yep, this nope. It's more important than fantasy football. It's not worth it. Um, nope. It's not worth it to win like that. So uh, I, if uh, <laughs> I feel like I have to make my call on Jared Goff. Like, is somebody going to pick him up to play him against Jacksonville? Yeah. I mean, are they going to keep him though? It depends on how he does. Because if he does well against Jacksonville, I guarantee you they'll keep him for at least one week. I mean, week 14, we're, so we're here. One, two, three, four. I could wait two to here if I yeah. want. So let's look at tight ends. Because I, I don't, most people have a second quarterback. I don't think many people are picking him up. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> In the tight end landscape. Oof. Um. So we got Evan Ingram. Yeah, he could catch a touchdown. Uh, uh, that's it. I mean, I'm not rolling out Mike Gusecki. Stop telling me it's in a dome. I know. Like, am I? He's had three decent games. Well, one really good game, two decent games, and the rest has been unstartable. Like Kyle Pitts, pretty much. Sad to say, yes. It looks almost the same as Kyle Pitts. Uh, yeah, uh, but Gesicki's got – imagine if Pitts had Tua throwing him the ball. I, I can't. It hurts too much. I know. It's awful, and it's sad. Yeah, I mean, I. It won't show me Ingram, but oh, there we go. Oh, oh jeepers, that's awful. Do I just keep Dulcich? <laughs> <laughs> who, who do they play again? Kansas City. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only we other option. He's off Denver a ton, but I think you got to keep them. Well, maybe they'll bench Russell Wilson. <laughs> Drew Locke can throw him the ball, right? They don't have Drew Locke. They traded him. He's on Seattle now. Who's the backup? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who they've got. Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson? Oh, no. Who? Oh, no. And Brett Rippon? What? Okay. We can't. We're already over time. I just... Anyway, so those are our options. Yeah. Yep. All right. Great options. I uh, say we give it a week and see how things go. So hang on to the Dolch. Well, who cares if anyone else picks up those losers? Maybe somebody will drop somebody better. So drop the Dolch and grab Rashad White or <laughs> Jerry Judy or Watson. Oh, you can't drop DPJ. No, I was just throwing stuff in there. It's okay. This is not, um, these are not real. I just threw some stuff in there. Um, these were before the games even happened. Like this was just okay. Wait, Cole Komet? He's out there, but he's on by week fourteen. Oh yeah, that's true. But he might. I mean, they started using him in the red zone. So pick him up. Don't start Kyle Pitts. <laughs> yep, lock it in. I think you got to look. I, I'm pretty certain that he's had. 
he's definitely had two good games in a row. Where is he? Is that not how you spell it? There it is. Yep, two good games in a row. And that's coincidentally when they started using him. Right. Yeah. So six targets, seven targets. Yeah. I think, and I think that that's sustainable. I don't think the two touchdowns a game is sustainable, but he's a touchdown threat at least. Yeah. So I think I think you need to get him on the team for moving forward. Maybe, yeah, maybe drop Dulcich because nobody's going to pick him up again. He's going to be available. Yeah, maybe if I maybe someone will trade with me. <laughs> Worked so well so far. You just need to offer a book of trade that's somehow worse than anything we've come up with so far. Okay, I guess the real question is, is Cole Komet better? Rashad White, I like Fournette got hurt and he looked like a monster. Fournette's not that hurt. They have a bye next week and then he's coming back. I don't think it's worth it. No, I think I think Cole Komet's got to be your, your top priority. Okay, the only other thing I'll say is, and we should talk about our teams, um, is first of all, Eno Benjamin, baby. Cut from the Cardinals. Picked up immediately by the Texans. Holler at your boy. <laughs> Everybody wants him. Eno. Enough you said. know it. Um, yeah, the Rashad White, good game. But here's the one I wanted to just shake my hat at. Where is he? Um, Isaiah Pacheco? Yeah. Where is it? There he is. I mean, did you see what he did last week? I saw he got like a hundred, well, not a hundred yards, but yeah, 82 yards. 16 carries, 82 yards. You know who, how many snaps Clyde Edwards Hilaire played? Uh, did he get like two? Yeah, four. 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 I was, I was off. You were, you I were knew he didn't get many. So I, this is what I was waiting for, what I thought might happen. Yeah. I still don't know if I want him. Like he is the the two down running back on the Chiefs. They also don't right. run the ball. No, they really don't. Like they they pretty much crushed Jacksonville and he got 16. And even in like the red zone, like they're throwing the ball at the two yard line. Right. So where's the value? Right. I mean, the only thing I would say is like these are dream matchups <laughs> coming up. Like Mm, yeah. mm, they, mm, mm. so yeah i'm gonna be really sad when he's really good but it's not like i can trade him because the trade deadline is friday and it's not like i'm gonna start him over cmc and all the guys on my team so not at this point anyway no all right um final thing I think this will be fun. I know we're over time. Um, I want to talk about our teams, but really quick, pick winners. Green uh, Bay versus Tennessee. I trust Green Bay more than Tennessee. I think they turn this one around. Agreed. We'll we'll go back and forth and argue with each other. I think okay. uh, I think Chicago's on a roll and Atlanta's terrible. No arguments there. Although Chicago has been on a roll and still can't do anything about it, but I think they pull this one out. Yeah, but Atlanta can't beat anyone. Right. right now we'll see so, um buffalo cleveland buffalo it's at buffalo they don't lose it's true philadelphia okay that's not that doesn't count um <laughs> what do you think here jets at new england oh new england finds a way to pull that out they always do yeah i i don't trust the the jets against bill i i think the jets are good i just think at new england new england is going to find a way with like a third string quarterback and they'll like special teams their way to a victory. Yep. Uh, the Rams are a mess. So no way. Well, so is New Orleans. Yeah. But the Rams are a mess. I mean, yes, but that's like, I guess it is in New Orleans. So we'll go with that. Cup is hurt. We don't know if Stafford will be back from his concussion. There is no chance. I think the Rams win this game. I think that Stafford will be back. 
I think so too. But I still but I still know. think that New Orleans will find a way to win because both teams are just a complete disaster. Agreed. I'm glad this one lands on you. Giants versus Detroit. Oh, the Giants will take it. It's at New York. They're going to find a way to win, and Detroit will find a way to lose. It's what they do. Uh, sounds right to me. I love it. Which means we'd be, what, 9-2? and two? Whew. Yeah, man. Ouch. That's, um, we that's are some one, talk. We are one game back from the lead in the NFC. <laughs> hey, and Washington just showed what anyone can – they showed what can happen. I think I heard that the Giants have a 72% chance to make the playoffs. <laughs> the world is just crazy all right baltimore carolina easy baltimore win yeah washington at houston i like the resurgent washington i agree again houston's gonna find a way to lose that one washington will win i agree they just ain't terry scary terry to a long-term deal they're in it to win it I don't like picking for this game. I'm so glad you had to pick this one. I can't pick Denver. No. Like, they're so bad. At least Las Vegas has kept it close and, like, lost some heartbreakers. Denver just looks bad. Yeah. So, I no, no full health, Jerry, Judy. I think this is a no-brainer. Yeah. Sorry, Bethany. Um, Dallas and Minnesota, my friend. Dallas. I think Minnesota. We, we got, we got, we used up a lot of luck yeah. against against uh, Buffalo. There were some non calls, fine, yeah. but we used up a lot of luck. I think Dallas gets this one. I'm going to play it safe. I think if Minnesota runs the ball, they could win because Dallas's run defense is not pretty right now, and their pass defense is terrifying. So we'll see what yeah. happens. Um, yeah. It'll be a good game. I think it'll be a good game. But I I think Dallas wins this one, which makes me sad, but it's going to happen. Yep. Um, Cincinnati at Pittsburgh. I think I got to go with Cincinnati. Um, Although, you know, J.J. Watt or or, uh, what's his name, Watt, coming back, T.J.? T.J. Um, T.J. Watt. Yeah, T.J. Watt is is back. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Pittsburgh pulls this one out. No Jamar Chase. But I think the money's on Cincinnati. I think that's fair. Although Jamar Chase still on crutches. That's not good. That's scary. That's scary. All right. Uh, this is going to be a dud game. I know you were thinking this is going to be a dud. It's it's not going to be interesting. Kansas City is going to run away with it. It's not yeah. going to be fun. I agree. I agree. Chargers have been really disappointing this year. I I would have expected way more. And I think... Kansas City just rolls them. Agreed. And then if San Francisco can't beat Arizona, I, I, you know, the world is broken, especially if Kyler's still coming off that hammy. Like, And it's it's Shanahan versus Kingsbury. Yep. Yep. I know who I would pick. Well, this, we'll see uh, if you can help, because right now I think I'm in dead last. No, I'm in uh, second to last. Uh, in my pick'em league. Hey, only five off the lead. I know, right? So uh, I appreciate the help. All right, quickly, let's do our, uh, our a- any observations or recaps from this week's games of our teams? I, I think we should start with the Giants. I don't have a lot to say about the Giants. They beat a beatable Houston Texans team. Um, they Get made- the job done. I think Davis Mills took the team to the red zone four times and came out with zero points for those times. Like that's crazy. Ben don't uh, break. But that's who the Giants have been all year. Um, Daniel Jones is doing just enough to win games, which I think is worth something. I don't know that he's like Josh Allen. His ceiling is probably like, you know, what he's shown. Is he like a, a Ryan Tannehill? Um, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised if they signed him to a cheap deal, you know, team friendly deal next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't be like that disappointed. Um, all the new QBs terrify me like Bryce young, amazing talent, tiny. I don't want Russell Wilson 2.0. Like anyway, so I, I was encouraged. Uh, the only part that really made me sad was Kenny Galladay, you know, two drops, no catches, just a disaster. 
of a human being. And Kadarius proving Tony, that he can't play. Yes, and Kadarius Tony lighting it up for the Chiefs. Those two things hurt, but you got that W though. Saquon, what like 35 carries? <laughs> He is literally that old, like, Greg Jennings Madden clip. He puts the team on his back. He broke his <laughs> leg. <laughs> he broke it, you haven't seen it, and you don't mind language. Look it up. That was, Yeah, that's a deep cut from, like, probably, like, 15 years ago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, yeah. Um, no, that, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, in regards to the Vikings – there were several fairly egregious missed calls that all the while it's like, this is going to be the one that screws us over. This is the one we lose the game because of, and it didn't happen. It was amazing. And Justin Jefferson, how does he do any of the things he does? And I don't need to talk about the catch because everyone has but the guy's a monster. It didn't make any sense. It was insane. I, like I watched replays of it and it's like his hand was on the side of the ball going down to the turf. How do you, and I know that the defender had his hand on it too, but like the defender had two hands and he ripped it away on fourth and 18. Yeah, it was, I don't know. He doesn't give up. I don't know. Yeah. And, and that's what I, that's what I like about the team. They just don't give up. And I know that, they, every single game has been close so far. They haven't pulled away from anyone, but they've also proven that nobody can pull away from them outside from Philadelphia. But just imagine what they could have done under the previous regime with this roster, you know? like Yeah, we would have been like two and nine. Yeah, I, I, I loved that game because it was a complete portrayal of one bounce of the football changes everything. Yep. Right? Josh Allen doesn't fumble on the one inch line. Those turnovers, the Justin Jefferson catch, like one play yep. going differently changes yep. the whole trajectory. So, yep. but, and that's the point. And, and I've heard some people make the, make the call that like nobody had given up. Like, yeah, Buffalo had to fumble, but we had two guys right in there immediately. Like, even if that wasn't fumbled, which, you know, on another type of thing, it might not have been. But, like, Eric Kendricks was already beelining it through. There's not a guarantee that he doesn't get a safety on that play. Well, I was going to say, I think Buffalo really missed Brian Dable there, who would have said, take the safety like the Giants did to secure the victory, you morons. Well, the problem with that is that if you do take the safety, you're still giving the Vikings, like, I think there was like 40 seconds left. Yeah. So technically, it, like, if there was like 10 seconds left, absolutely you take the safety. But with 40 seconds left, and I think the Vikings had one timeout, and all they would need is a field goal, that's a little tougher to, to go with. Yeah, I mean... And, they might have been planning to do that after rushing the ball twice, right? They were going to burn some. Oh, yeah. It wasn't for well, Yes. Yeah. That, that would have been the play, yeah. but I think that they, I think either way they, they had a very good chance of getting stuff. Cause I know the Vikings had two guys ready, like hitting that gap. And that's right where Josh Allen was going to go. And the fact that like, yeah, he drops the ball, but somehow the defender is on that even before the quarterback has started to go down. Like they knew what was coming. They were ready for it and, and they don't quit. And that's, that's the awesome thing about it. And I know some other people have like, like we were talking about earlier, they've slagged off uh, Buffalo for not kicking the field goal. But that still only would have put them up 13 points. And you know, with the way that that game has gone, I think I'd make the same decision as the coach because if you get that touchdown and you go up by 17, that's the game right there because the Vikings aren't getting more than two, two possessions. It's just not going to happen. And does 13 points really matter that much more than 10? Because all that would do is make the Vikings 
have to go for it. And guess what? It, you know, it it would have turned out about the same. I mean, I you can't say that because everything would have been different. But the fact is that I don't think that that was a bad call. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's let's end discussions on our teams with a clip. Because would you have rather rather have Josh Allen or this? Fourth down. The Giants need need a play. Daniel Jones hangs in the pocket. Ugh, delivers. <laughs> Darius Slayton, six-round pick. Goes. Goes. Look at that. Goes. Goes. He might have been a third round pick, but that's not exciting. Uh, <laughs> no, it's more fun if he's a sixth rounder. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's not a play I'm confident Daniel, like every quarterback, can do. So he does bring something to the table. Yep. Yep. No, we're we're in agreement on that, and I think that the Giants, he's played well enough to get another contract. You know, at least like you were saying, a team friendly, short term, like a one year prove it deal or yep. one year with a with an option kind of thing i i I wouldn't be surprised it was a fifth round pick i apologize today okay fifth rounder i mean i mean um all right last last segment and i told bethany i'd hang out with her so let's uh yeah i'll make this quick give us Um, to stand so just to catch you up on that we're doing the tomb of annihilation we're heading through the jungles of chult uh we've been traveling with our guide Hugh Hackenstone, possibly a drunk dwarf. No, I mean he's definitely a drunk. We found him in a tavern. He's very cheap though, so that's the best part. Uh, we come across this group of flaming fist mercenaries who are like, oh, you know, do you have your credentials for the flaming fist? And like Hugh turns around to us with like this look of like, oh no. And it's like, Hugh, what have you done to us? And so it's like, okay, something bad's going to happen. So before we're that close to them, um, I'm like, okay, I know Hugh doesn't have this. So as the as the rogue, I start like going through my bag and I, I have my, my prestidigitation cantrip. So what I do is I take a piece of paper from my forgery kit, which I could have used to forge the dumb thing had Hugh even told me that that was going to be a possibility, which I didn't know. That was great. Um, so I take I, I cast press the digitation on my uh, on a piece of paper for my forgery kit as like the rest of the team is like asking them like, oh, what what exactly do you need? So they kind of showed like the the form itself. And so what I did because it, it can make marks on a paper. I knew I couldn't make like full writing and obviously wouldn't want that anyway. But I had it come up where. I made it look like ink that had been smudged by like huge like water droplets and stuff and like go on you're like oh you know I I was I was by the river I dropped my bag in the river and it's like this is what happened um passed a couple of uh persuasion checks and subterfuge or stealth checks um sleight of hand sorry not Still, sleight of hand. Uh, had to talk to the uh, the scribe. The scribe got us a new one, which may not work out in our favor because apparently there's some thing about what we might have to give the flaming fist. But I'm gonna let other people worry about that. And I, you know, they they don't have the full records, so again, we might get in trouble later on. I'm not worried about it. It'll be fine. Um, so we're, we're going down the river and we come across this like weird corpse tree thing that's like feeding on things underneath the river. So I, my character hadn't like, uh, eaten any of the fruit cause I didn't feel like there was, there was something weird going on. A couple of the people ate the fruits. It was fine apparently cause apparently the tree had like an aura of nobility or something. I don't know. I didn't want to eat any corpse tree fruit, so I didn't touch that. Um, and we're coming up on Camp Righteous, which apparently was taken over by goblins and is in some ruins. And there's some stuff that, like, the goblins apparently wanted to find. This is where, like, the Flaming Fist people had said, like, they had had boats originally, but the goblins ruined them. So it's like, okay, well, we'll cut off early 
We'll stop like an hour away from Camp Righteous. We we're gonna we're in this clearing, and there's like a a pool of what I think is blood. Um, at the center of it, there's like a hole through the top of the clearing, like going through the canopy of trees, and there's like this weird like I'm pretty sure she's a hag, but there's like this like old woman who is like laughing in like the shadows and she's got like a blue blue triangle on her forehead don't know what the, what that's all about she says she wants to help they cast detect uh detect good and evil good and evil yeah so she's definitely i think he said neutral evil um so yeah pretty much a hag um kind of like I've got my familiar, which is an owl now, like going around back to try to like maybe distract her and haggle with her. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's kind of where we ended. The next session is on the 26th. So in a few weeks or a couple weeks, yeah, a couple weeks, I might have another update. I love it. It's good stuff. It's been a lot of fun. Well, next week, um, we may have to find a different filming schedule because I'm preaching, um, or we might just have to do it late. We'll see what um, what we want to do. We have no youth group on Wednesday, uh, and so I might be able to do it Wednesday night, but okay. just letting our viewers know there might be a slight interruption due to Thanksgiving, but we'll get an episode out there. Don't oh, worry. don't worry, everyone. It's going to happen. We have Thanksgiving games to worry about. So Oh, that'll be fun. I think the Giants play. Maybe Do they? Like Dallas? Who plays? Is it a Dallas game? Uh because I know it's I know it's Detroit and Dallas always play on Thanksgiving, don't they? The Giants and the Cowboys, 3 30 p.m. And the Patriots and the Vikings. Oh, really? And the Bills and the Lions. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So we'll have some stuff to talk about. Not loving a short week against a Belichick team, but we'll see. We'll yep. see. I have faith in O'Connell. I think he's good. I I think we both found coaches we like, so that's that's a win. I would agree with that. All right. Well, I think we put in some good work. Um, any closing thoughts? Uh, not anything I can think of right now. Okay, well, faithful viewers, start better players than us and make your late shifts be good ones because the mine clearly never are. Yeah, don't late shifts. That's what we learned. Except with us. <laughs> yeah. All right, on that note, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Peace.